Sorry for my technical uh, fumbling. <laughs> Somehow I didn't copy the link when I went to my desktop and now I am. Here we go. So, so there it's in the chat for those of you who haven't yet uh, received it. So yeah, so welcome everyone. Uh, it's really nice to see you here. And we have been going through the parami and uh, which are perfections of the heart. And in the um, early Buddhist tradition, there are 10. Uh, in some other traditions, there are eight or six. And we're on the ninth parami, and uh, it's what the author of this uh, little booklet that I, I, I just uh, pasted in the chat calls it, it's uh, holistic kindness. So sometimes metta, the word metta, um, which many of you may be familiar with, it's one of the perfections of the heart, one of the boundless qualities of heart. And it, it appears in the parami also. Um, in Buddhism, there are many overlapping lists of different uh, practices and qualities to cultivate. And uh, they appear in different lists because these qualities work together and support each other and are cultivated in ways that um, work together. They, uh, they, they, they kind of mutually um, enhance the development of one another. So in this list, um, metta is uh, the ninth. So it's near the culmination. And uh, although it's not a linear process, but, but they do build on each other. Um, so Ajahn Suchito translates metta as holistic kindness, which I, uh, I really like that translation. Um, it's a, it's a quality that as a perfection of the heart or a parami, we practice bringing to, to all beings. So the, the view in our practice is to cultivate metta for, for all beings. And, um, and, you know, one of the things that he points out in, you know, as he begins his teaching is that, um, you know, we all very, in a very natural way, uh, and also conditioned way, fall into the habit of viewing other beings and other people, we'll talk about other people in particular, but this applies to all beings. Um, we fall into the habit of seeing uh, ourself and other. So we have a, a dualistic um, default in the way that we, uh, we see people and we interact with people, me and you, me and them. And, um, and as we practice and, enter into more um, deep Dharma experience and understanding, we, we begin to not only intellectually understand, but begin to really <clears throat> feel on a deep level that, that our boundaries are not so um, solid, so, so fixed as we, um, we normally, understand them and experience them. Uh, so um, just uh, the, the meditation or the contemplation on the four elements reminds us that we breathe, we take in liquids, we are warmed by the sun and by the warmth of the, of the environment. Um, we take in nutrition, food, and, and so build the, 
you know, the, the earth element of the body. So, so earth, uh, water, fire, and air, these are elements that make up our body and, and they flow in and through us and out of us continuously. And so, so just contemplating that um, helps us to recognize that, that there's not a, a fixed or solid self um, with a, a clear boundary. And we are also very touched in many ways, um, emotionally, physically, mentally, spiritually, we're touched by other beings and, uh, and, and our life directions are influenced by our interactions and our conversations and how we, how we engage with others. So, I mean, I, I can think of so many times in my life when pivotal choices were made based on conversations that I had with people. So, so I don't have any delusion that I have, um, you know, kind of charted my course, uh, you know, or uh, done it my way as uh, the, the deluded lyrics of the song go. Uh, it's, it's, a very, uh, it's a very interconnected and interdependent process of how our lives unfold. And so, so really understanding this um, helps us to, to recognize how deeply our lives are intertwined with the people that we know and the people that we don't know. So many choices are made by people that we don't know. Um, actions are done that, that have a, a deep impact on our lives and on the lives of those close to us. And um, and I, I I was listening to a uh, to a talk yesterday. Uh, there was this Mind and Life Institute um, panel discussion with the Dalai Lama on um, on cultivating compassion in these uncertain times, and um, and the Dalai Lama just kept repeating how. You know, he gets up in the morning, you know, he really wanted to emphasize this in the beginning of his talk. He gets up in the morning and he brings to mind how even though there are super, superficial differences between us, and it's not that these differences should be erased or overlooked, you know, um, differences of uh, the color of our skin, of our ethnic backgrounds, religious backgrounds, languages, cultures, uh, personal histories, experiences, um, access to resources, um, all of these many, many things that, uh, that differentiate us and, and, you know, and that, and, and that bring uh, some people into um, being more privileged and others being more under-resourced. And, and so it's not to erase that, but, but to, to also realize that, you know, on a deeper level, we're all so similar as human beings. You know, the longings that we have, the fears that we have, um, our, our hearts that are capable of great kindness. So, so to remind ourselves of this, all the time, the Dalai Lama said, you know, he does it every morning, first thing, it's his first thought that I am one of 7 billion human beings on this planet that are so similar to me. And, um, and then he talked later about, you know, and yet at the same time, we are one. We are not so differentiated. We are, we are, uh, our, our, our lives are interdependent. So, so by that, by what he means by that is, and he talked about this is, is that 
we by our perception and i this is what i was talking about right in the beginning our perceptions because we've been conditioned to bring up to 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 perceive to uh to experience ourselves and others in certain ways our our perceptions is that we're all separate and um and yet uh in so many deeper ways that perception is um is a misperception it's misleading because we really are uh our our life is is very unified um and and we we really i mean we really don't there's there's a beautiful teaching in um in a particular tradition of zen called the zen peacemakers um that we really don't know we don't know who we are we don't know and and we don't even know you know not not even really knowing who we are what we are capable of you know not deeply knowing not not you know we can't put ourselves in a box we can't say i am this i am that you know because we can keep surprising ourselves we can keep saying things doing things thinking things being capable of things for better and for worse that can surprise us and and so not even really knowing ourselves how can we really say that we know anybody else um know in this kind of intellectual way that puts something defines something puts it in a box so so that quality of of not knowing is is very much a part of this capacity to be open hearted like because when we think we know somebody we may write them off we may say oh they're such a you know they're so self absorbed they're so uh nasty um they're just so superficial all of these ways that we that we put people in a box and write them off and when when we can be when we can bring interest and not knowing and curiosity to our engagement with others the the this, this not knowing that that i just referred to in zen peacemakers there is actually three parts to this these vows they take a vow to to not know <laughs> they take a vow to to keep this openness of mind of heart uh, of not not closing down and then the second part is to um to be a witness so not knowing and then witnessing uh so just witnessing is the and and so there's a subjectivity there there's a there's a presence of an eye it doesn't have to be a, a closed eye a fixed eye a self constructed eye that i am this but there there is this presence this aliveness this the subjectivity that is engaging with the perceived other so and then the third part is from that place of not knowing and witnessing um a compassionate response so a response that comes from not knowing not thinking oh that person is sad they need me to comfort them so they feel better so that they stop being sad because that's really coming from a self like oh their sadness makes me uncomfortable 
I, I, I'm not, I, I find that hard to be with that sadness and, you know, it's, I, I want them to feel better. So let's all, let, let's all feel better. Uh, so I, I want them to stop feeling sad. So, but then, then the place of, if we can have a compassionate response, which comes from this, this, just this place of witnessing uh, and and not knowing and an openness and it might um, it just might be letting them know that we're present that we're here with them you don't know what it would be so just um, a couple of more things about this holistic kindness. So this, um, this quality of metta, the, the Buddha talks about it as being a tool for liberation. So it liberates us from aversion and grasping and ignorance. So, uh, so it is alone, love or holistic kindness, metta is not alone. It is not um, a tool for complete awakening because we need the wisdom to dig up the roots of delusion. And yet it, it is a very powerful tool for, um, as a medicine for aversion and, and uh, grasping and ignorance, which is a turning away of the mind. Um, one of the phrases that I, I, I jotted down from Ajahn Suchito's book is that um, this holistic kindness releases others from being the objects of our projections, <laughs> you know. So I, I really like that. You know, like you know, we're we're always projecting, we're always bringing these assumptions about you know, you know, based on how people may look or what they do or something that we've heard about them, and and so uh, we're always projecting, you know, a, a, a self on them. <laughs> Just as we construct a self for ourselves, we're, project, we're always projecting. And, and so metta, or this holistic kindness, brings this quality of, of interest, you know, based on that, rooted in that not knowing. So, so I'm interested in you. I'm curious about you. I, I care about you. I want to... I want to understand more about how you experience the world, how you experience life. Um, so kindness is so is is so nourishing to our well-being. You just take a moment and think about a moment you know, uh, and it doesn't have to be a big thing when somebody just offered you kindness, just out of the blue, just did something kind for you. It could be recent. It could be something in the past. And in some way, on some level, maybe you didn't, kind of take it in right away, but um, on some level, you know, it nourishes us. It, it helps us recognize that we belong, that we're part of this web of life, that we, we have a connection, that somebody cares. And, um, and there are so many ways that we can offer 
kindness and we might we might discount the importance of of this kindness that we can offer whether it's a smile or a gesture of checking in on somebody or um, uh, a word of appreciation about things that people do in our lives that just keep our lives on course and on, you know, on an even keel. Uh, many ways that we're supported in our lives. So, so kindness as, as a parami, you know, is, is developed to be boundless. So that's the aspiration. No one left out, like no one excluded. So, it's, I think that, I think that we learn kindness. Um, like, I feel that for me, my children taught me how to be kind and how to be loving um, because, and how to be unselfish because it, it was um, kind of, you know, I needed to show up. I needed to be there for them. Uh, and yet, if I limit my kindness just to my children or to my clan, you know, my family, my tribe, uh, then that's not the kindness, the parami of kindness, of holistic kindness. The parami of holistic kindness goes beyond, doesn't, doesn't, uh, isn't limited by these divisions that we, these mundane divisions that we make um, and, you know, create others, the othering that we do in so many ways. Um, so, so our uh, kindness needs to um, be greater than that. It's a greater kindness. It's a deeper, it's a more profound, more unifying kind of kindness. And, and it is uh, liberating not only um, like we're tilling the field of our heart because these habits of aversion, these habits of judgment and, and othering just don't take root in the same way. You know, we can, we can plant more wholesome seeds of caring for all beings and not only sentient beings, but the earth herself. And so this, this quality of kindness is, is a practice that, uh, that helps us to um, helps us to live our lives from a place of deep connection. So, uh, so let me stop there and um, and I will pause the so let's take a posture for meditation, whatever that may be, whether it's sitting or standing or lying down.
and inviting the body to settle. To be held, to be held by Mother Earth. That support is there. We can always trust it to be there. Let's, let's begin our practice with a heart of gratitude for, for Buddha, Dharma, and Sangha. Buddha being the awakened one, the awakened one, not only as a historical figure. Really, most essentially, as the awakened one who is at the heart of our being, of our own being. Who is our essential being. the openness of awareness, the awareness which doesn't cling, and doesn't push away, doesn't turn away, doesn't close the mind, the quality of openness which we glimpse from time to time, and maybe moments of living from that space or even longer. Stretches of living from that space of openness. Gratitude for Dharma, the teachings. Teachings not only as an abstract set of verbal and written teachings out there, but the Dharma as the realized teachings. What have I known? What have I come to really understand within myself? About letting go, about turning toward what is difficult, about mindfulness, about calling forth compassion and kindness. How has the Dharma been realized within this being? And Sangha. The community of those who are on the path. So Sangha, those who are gathered here today and also this body Gratitude for this body. However, this body may be in pain or having illness. We're limited in some way, and yet here we are. We're alive and we're present.
And gratitude is a doorway to kindness, appreciation. So bringing quality of kind presence kind awareness in the whole body however you experience that when I say the whole body it doesn't have to be anything in particular. It can be parts of the body that you find most easy to connect with. You might have a, a sense of the body in the in your mind, uh, it's called proprioception, sense of the whole body. In whatever posture it's comported. Not, um, not as a solid, hard-edged object, but as a, a vibrant, dynamic, permeable, living thing, living being. Bringing a quality of kindness and compassion to the body. This body, like all bodies, subject to aging, illness, and death.
For the last part of the sitting, I'd like to offer a guided practice of metta, of radiating metta. Breathing into the heart center. And connect with this quality of kindness by bringing to mind a being that you care deeply about. It could be yourself. It could be a loved one, family or friend, or an animal, some being that you have uh, sincere and deep wishes of goodwill, caring for their well-being, wishing them to thrive, be happy and well. And just noticing what that quality of metta is in your experience. And it could be a kind of energy, heart energy. It could be more mental. And there's no right or wrong. It could be could be different things at different times. If it's helpful, you might place your hand at the heart center. This and this is sometimes helpful in just focusing our attention there. And bringing a quality of visualization into this practice, just experiencing or visualizing this quality of, of metta as a kind of a light radiating from within your heart center. It could be like a flame or a sun. star radiating to the front, to the back, to the left, to the right, above and below, in all directions, filling the whole body and extending beyond the permeable body. into the space around you. And you don't need to pay attention to where, how far this metta extends. It's just that you're not putting any boundary on it. You're just allowing it to radiate naturally as the sun radiates naturally, as a candle radiates naturally, light in all directions, and warmth. You might experience it as warmth. And you might find beings appearing within the sphere of this radiant kindness. You might find beings that you know, 
beings that you don't know. And letting this radiation of goodwill, kindness, caring, be effortless. There's no need to push the light. And Whatever happens is also fine if the light dims, if the flame seems to be extinguished, just allowing caring and kindness to be there for that and in that as well. May all beings be well. May all beings be happy. May the goodness of our practice in our lives serve and support the well being of all beings everywhere. And may all beings come to freedom.